Hey everybody, joining me right now we've got Amanda Stevens, freelance journalist right now for covering FGC. How's it going, Amanda? Uh, it's going pretty good. How are you doing? Doing pretty fantastically. So Red Bull Conquest this weekend, huh? I bet you were busy. Uh, yeah, you know, it was a crazy event. I mean, the format that they Red Bull switched to from last year, last year had, you know, the Proving Ground events where people could get qualification spots only for Street Fighter V. And then now we have the Conquest format of, you know, represent your city, get to do some trash talking, and then, you know, have a region be able to say we're the strongest FGC region, yeah. not just in Street Fighter, but in Guilty and Tekken. I mean, that was a really cool concept. It really was. I heard a lot of heat coming from the SoCal region. I'm so <laughs> glad that New York pulled through. You know, our fake New York region, you know, I think we had Punk uh, <laughs> as one of our, you know, New Yorkers. Yeah. So, you know, it's cool, but everybody, every region had, you know, their, uh, their you know, uh, what do you call them? Uh... I'm blanking on the term, but like, for example, Joey Fury, you know, it was Boston, but he's from Buffalo. Marlon Pye over in Guilty Gear and Peeling. You know, yeah. you have Peeling, who's from the SoCal area, playing for Phoenix. So, like, everybody had, you know, had some secret weapons. Yeah, it's okay. We, we kind of needed it. Punk did really well, though. <laughs> and um, let's talk about Conquest and more specifically, let's talk some Street Fighter V, because I know that's one of your favorite match games, rather, of the three there. So, Tokido lost to CJ Truth. I feel like that's a pretty big deal. How do you feel about that matchup? I mean, so, I mean, you can't ever count out the murder face, right? Tokido is, I think, the most dominant he's ever been. I don't think there's an event he wasn't either first, second, or third. Uh, so, when you put your smart money on the table, you gotta always root for Tokido. However, CJ Truth this event and sort of into the back half of the CPT season has been looking really, really strong. And I think even, I think when you, uh, I was talking to Tokido about it uh, during the NA premiere side of the event, and even he said, you know, sometimes losers is an advantage because you're you're riding momentum. And we saw it when he did it to Tokido, having that momentum coming from the loser side, you know, being warmed up. Uh, really played into CJ's favor. And you saw the pressure start to mount on Takedo, which is uncharacteristic. Like, he missed a, a combo into a critical art. So, worked out for the guy. Yeah, it really did end up working out for him. And Chris Tatarian. So, with, because CJ Truth won, Chris Tatarian was able to qualify? How did that work out? So, basically, man, I had to, I had to have this explained to me by, like, multiple people multiple times and it's a really <laughs> tricky situation because because the rule set's very like convoluted right so basically because chris t was the highest ranking uh north american player who wasn't already qualified for the capcom cup because well the way things worked out because cj truth was already qualified and so was punk uh chris t becomes the next person down the line who gets the North American slot, thanks to, you know, everybody else already being qualified. And it's really good for Chris T because this dude has been putting in the hours, you know, hitting up as many events as he possibly can, mostly thanks to Cy Games Beast. You know, not so great showing at Canada Cup, but, you know, you know, third at SoCal Regionals, you know, just shy of top 16, both at DreamHack Montreal mm -hmm. and Evolution, you know, coming in fifth on some North American online events, you know, not, you know, the consistent top eight performance, yeah. but definitely a guy who's been putting his boots on the ground right. and, you know, putting in the business. On right. a character like Ken, who is yeah. not a high T character. Not at by all. any means. <laughs> yeah, like not yeah. by any means. And I do really love the organization, Psy Games Beast. I'm a huge fan of how they were created and everything that they do. But let's take it a step further now and talk Capcom Pro Tour. Let me get your predictions and I guess what you think going into the event. All right, so. I love the Capcom Cup. I think it's uh, a great cap to a long year. You know, it starts at final round in March, ends in December. Ton of events across the world. So if we're... Let, let's. I've been making a bunch of commentators do this because I put together a really bougie-looking trophy <laughs> on who can uh, get the most top eight correct. Last yeah. year, uh, Tasty Steve won the trophy. So this year, uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to make sure that I win the trophy because, you know, I don't want to mail it to nobody. Uh, so obviously, out of the gate, if you're looking for top eight competitors, you got to give it to the top three, right? Tokido, Fujimura, and Problem X. Tokido, like I said, if he's if he's not first, he's second or third. 
Fujimori is just looking like a beast. Nobody seems to really be able to handle his Ibuki. And then Mr. Problem X. Uh, he has the advantage of playing probably the trickiest bison to play against in the world, and it helps him a lot against the Japanese players who don't really have a bison to practice against. You know, on the inverse, you know, he struggles against some really top-tier characters like Guile, and, you know, he doesn't have an Akuma to practice against, which makes it a really yeah. interesting matchup for him versus Takedo. So, easy, money, those three, definitely top eighting. Uh, I'd put money on it easy. Uh, I'm also going to give it to Justin Wong. Uh, with the departure of a uh, player who is no longer in the running, uh, Justin is one of the scariest monots left. Yeah. Uh, it's between him and Sako. So, if I had to pick between the two monots... I, I want to give it to Justin's keep away style more than Sako's very aggressive high movement style. I see. Uh, but honestly, I would like to just say Manat is like one of the top eighters because I wouldn't be surprised if it was one or the other. Uh, right. But if you maybe pick one, it'd be Justin. Uh, after that, uh, I really think that we will see. Hmm. So now we got four, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, I really want to say Bonchan, uh, and I hope that we get to see this man, Sagat. Sagat's not looking too great. I uh, was talking to Punk this weekend, though, and he thinks Sagat beats Akuma. Talked to Takedo. Takedo seemed very uh, of a different opinion, Ooh. but we saw it get blown up by Samurai at yeah. uh, Red Bull Conquest, you know. Punk tried the matchup and he got blown up by Samurai's uh, Akuma, which is not the same level of Takedo, so <laughs> Punk's probably wrong. But we'll still we'll still put Bonchan in this top eight, so we're at five now. Okay, uh, three more. Now things get a little tricky. Uh, I want to give it to Gachakun. I think Gachakun is probably the best Rashid mm -hmm. in the world right now. Uh, he's been looking really, really good. Uh, I'm going to say that if there has to be a Kami in this top eight, it's probably going to be Zhao Hai, you know, second yeah. place at Canada Cup. Looks really strong against Sakito. Uh, looks really consistent and always very strong. So we're at seven. Um, now, this is where it's really difficult. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where's the cutoff big, here? Because because I need to get to eight, right? So yeah. I guess I gotta say Daigo. I don't know how I got Ooh. this far down the line. It didn't say Daigo Umahara. Um, you know, there's a bunch of really strong guys that are qualified. You know, you've got Kaba, you've got Knuckle Do. But if you count out Daigo, then you probably aren't following Street Fighter. Every time we count him out, every time we're like, oh, man, this isn't Daigo's game. You know, <laughs> Daigo runs a train on people and is like, remember, I'm the beast. Yeah, so, he is. He is. He is the OG beast. Like, for real. So, so you got to I got to give it to him. Uh, I mean, like, I'm a little sketchy on saying it because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a camp where I kind of want to count out Daigo. But every time you do that, you look like a fool. So... Absolutely. I well, want to look like a fool right now. Amanda Stevens, thank you so much for talking with us today. You're managing editor at ProvingGrounds.tv, freelance writer. Go hit her up for some awesome content. Now, Nora, we're going to toss it back over to you.